Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Deepa Robbins from Designs by D and I have the next Spellbinders release to share with you today. I have about six or seven collections to share with you this month but the first one I'm sharing with you is one of my favorites and this is the Layered Fleur Bouquet Slimline Collection and this one is a stunner. There are tons of beautiful flowers, layered flowers that you can use to make a ton of beautiful cards and along with the rest of the products and the entire release for this month, you get a great amount of product for making Mother's Day cards, which is coming up soon. So here is all of the product that I have to share with you. There's a bunch more for this collection, but this one is the Half Slimline Oval. This is very nice because it has that huge sentiment in it, and that's what drew me to that one. This is the Sweet Leaf Mini Slimline, and this one makes a mini slimline with a cute viney. Then you have the layered cherry blossoms, which I'm going to be using today. And then you have these layered lilies, which I've got to say is one of the most stunning sets I've gotten so far. It is really nice the way those lilies come together and the fact that those plates kind of cut out everything you need in one go for each um, flower. So I also have here the Flowers for You set. This is from the Inspired Basics collection, also released this month. It's a beautiful glimmer plate and you can see that there's three bouquets here that you can foil in one go. So what I'm going to do is use this to kind of make a background on my piece of cardstock here. So I'm using gray and then I'm using some blush, not rose gold, but blush because it's just a little bit softer of a color. And because I'm using this as my background, I don't want it to stand out too much. So I'm basically taking this huge piece of foil and I'm just going to use this uh, plate and just... Um, heat or foil it a few times to create a complete background. Now one thing I did here is I ended up cutting off the excess foil because I didn't want it to over foil. However, you will see in another video coming up in the next uh, few days or so that I do end up using the negative foil for this and it would have been better to keep it intact. So you can see that first one foiled so nicely. I'll go ahead and position the second piece and put that through and you see I'm just kind of missing like one little bit at the edge there so I'll just carefully foil this one little extra piece there at the edge and as you can see for each time that I do this I am using that hinge method so I don't know if you've paid attention to the videos that Yana does but um, that's where I learned this hinge method and it's literally just what I use for everything. Now moving on to the cherry blossoms, I've basically taken all of those dies and cut them out of white cardstock. Now I find that this works the best for me. If you would like to choose your colored cardstocks, go ahead and do that and cut them out however you want. But I like cutting it out in white and then adding color because I kind of like to add a variation of tone in my color. I kind of like it darker in areas, lighter in others, and this works in order to do that. So all I've done here is I've kept my negative pieces. I put some washi tape on the back so the sticky side is up and then I will basically like you just like you do die in um, die cut inlay. I will inlay the die cut back into that negative piece and then I'll just use my colors. My I could use markers if you wanted. I find that works well and also any inks that you have to color those white pieces of cardstock. Now I'm using some oxide inks here. I've got vintage photo and some walnut stain for the branches and I have these cute little um, small blending brushes that I actually got from Amazon which works perfectly for this. There are also other companies who've come out with these smaller blending brushes like I think Waffle Flower has some and also Altenew but I find that it's harder for me to kind of get those here in Canada and along with the shipping unless I'm getting like a big shipment it um, is not really worth it for me so I do like getting these from Amazon plus they come here the next day I don't have to wait that long. Now I just got my hands on saltwater taffy. I know it's been out there for a while, but I finally just got it. So I'm using this for my cherry blossoms, which works perfectly because it's a nice peachy pink. It's a softer pink. So what I'm doing is I'm concentrating the color in the center of the flower or the bottom of the flower where the bud would have formed. And then just kind of blending it outwards lightly towards the edges so that you can see some of the white, but not too much. And once that's done, you also have the tiny little center. So for the flower centers, I actually ended up using some picked raspberry just because 
or is that worn lipstick? I'm so sorry. I think that's worn lipstick and I'm using that just to create a little bit of a darker center so that when I put it in the middle of my flower, there's a little bit of contrast and you can kind of see the difference there. Now for the leaves, I'm using some mowed lawn and some evergreen bough. And just like before, I'm just going to be concentrating the mowed lawn, which is the green, like the nice yellowy green towards the bottom and then out in the, uh, on the edges. And then I will be concentrating more of the evergreen bough in the bottom. So I imagine that usually my leaves are going to be darker at the bottom and as you go outwards the light kind of hits it more and that's why it looks a little lighter so I use a lighter color on the outside. You could put the colors on there however you want but this is just what seems to work for me and what, what I feel looks the most realistic. So once I've gotten all of that inked up I'll take out take them all out from that negative piece and then I have to basically assemble, assemble them. So sorry, I see, it feels like I'm all tongues today. I can't get out the words that I need. But anyways, this is what all of the little pieces look like once I'm done. And this set actually makes three flowers. So it makes a big open flower. And actually, sorry, it makes four flowers, an open flower and three buds. So this is the first of the buds. It's more of an open bud where the flower is almost fully open. And when you do cut these out, it comes in sets. So each of those little sets is one flower. So that's how you kind of know which die cut goes with what. So I'm not sure if that's making sense. So that flower at the top that's completed, that was one die and it cut out the three pieces that were needed to make that. Now the flower at the bottom was another die and I think there were four pieces to put that one together. And you can see I'm adding the little green portions at the bottom that was cut separately from another die. And then for this one, it's just two pieces and that's also a separate die as well. Now here's another cool thing that was released this month, glitter foam. Now I've got to say at first I was like, oh, I could just use glitter paper. I mean, what do I need the foam for? But actually the foam is ideal. And I have to say that these foam are really good quality and work perfect for sentiments. It's not too firm but it's soft enough that you can cut it with a die and it kind of plumps up back to its size and it doesn't distort the, um, the shape of what you're die cutting too much so that when you do put it down, it looks absolutely stunning. Not only does it save you a lot of time in maybe backing up or layering die cuts to create dimension or adding little pieces of foam behind your die cut that you wanna prop up, but I've got to say the colors are stunning and that glitter is so nice. It's not the type that's going to come off on your hand. It really sticks to that foam. It's not going anywhere. And I, I've got to say this is going to be one of those staples in my craft room because I've got like I really I got to hand it to Spellbinders for this one. It was a really good idea to do this. Now they actually come in packs of two. I have all of them here, but um, they're pretty inexpensive. And if I just okay just buy one of them and try it and I guarantee you'll be in love with it after that. They are, um, sorry, they are like full size paper. So like eight and a half by 11 size. So one page will actually last you, last you a long time as long as you're not die cutting like a big image. Okay, so that's my spiel for the glitter foam. But as you can see, I've taken my background and I've taken all of those flowers and branches and I've started to basically assemble them on the bottom half of my card here. So you can see some of my backgrounds being covered, but not all of it. And now that I've got the flowers pretty much where I want them, I need a sentiment. I'll be using the mini everyday sentiment set. And this one is, uh, it's just another set that I really love because there's just so many sentiments that you can choose from here. They work great as sub sentiments or main sentiments. It's completely up to you how you want to use them. And it also has different size banners you can use to cut all of these out. So I went ahead and foiled that as well using the blush foil. And I used a little bit of a foam strip to kind of prop that up down there at the bottom. And then all I have to do to add my little foam sentiment here is to just add a little bit of my Barely Arts glue to the back. And then I'll put it on top. And you don't really need to press down too much. You are going to have to kind of move it around to get that sentiment straight. But once it's there and dried, it's good to go. 
Now I had some of these die cut pieces left over, so I thought why not continue my pattern on the inside of my card. If you have seen my videos, I do like to show you designs on some of the insides of my cards. I know some people, they ask sometimes, what is it that you put on the inside? Do you just leave it blank? I hate leaving it blank. I like to put at least a little something so that you're tying in that inside to the outside and it's kind of coordinated. I'm very big on coordination. So I'm adding all of these extra little flowers along with that branch on the inside here. And basically as a rule of thumb for myself, what I like to do is just whenever I'm doing die cutting, I make sure I cut out some extra because I know I'm gonna use it on the inside. It's just a tiny little branch, it's off there in the, the bottom left. It doesn't take that much longer to do and it just really completes your card. So now for my embellishments. I'm using the Spellbinders Color Essentials Gems. This is the gold mix. So it actually has like a solid gold and then like a crystal gold. And I don't like using too many of them because they're so pretty. So I go to the sets that I have more gems. And this one is Pink Fresh Studio Glacier Jewels. And I just added those on the background. And you can see that is my completed card. And I've got to say, besides the lilies, the cherry blossoms are definitely my favorite for this collection. Now here are all of the cards. You can see we've got the cherry blossom card. You saw that beautiful lily card that I did. I actually used that mini vines or mini leaf set with the glitter foam. And then I've also got some more of those cherry blossoms using the Glimmer Essentials solid plate. So I will have um, some video shorts or some reels that I'll be posting on my Instagram account. So go ahead and follow me there at Designs by D. And um, you can see some cute little videos showing you how I put the rest of these cards together. As for this video, I'm pretty much done. I hope you liked what I created and you've been inspired to check out this uh, collection and maybe order something for yourself. Please go ahead and use the links that are linked in my blog. If you have a chance, I do get a little bit of a commission and that really helps me out to bring these videos to you each time there's a release. And I hope you guys have a great day. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Bye.